first and foremost, congrats to Louisville. Um, <clears throat> their team played really hard, uh, really good defense. Uh, it wasn't the most probably aesthetically pleasing game to watch. It was two teams that played hard and competed and really got after it. Uh, yeah, I thought we, we, we had a really good first half. We had some guys off the bench come in and step up and give us great minutes. We were not able to sustain that in the second half, especially offensively. Uh, defensively throughout, I thought we were pretty good. Uh, you know, that team was leading our league in, in, in scoring, averaging a little bit over 83 points a game. And for us to hold them to 66 is pretty good. Uh, but for us, it was our inability to score. And in the second half, uh, we, we, we didn't do a good job of value in the basketball. And that's what won the game for them. And, and they were able to make plays. So congrats to them. They're playing awfully well right now. Uh, you know, Chris and his staff have done an outstanding job. Those guys are big, they're physical. You know, I think the, the, the growth of their team, in my opinion, has been because of Williams and Enoch. I think those two guys have really played at a different level since we faced them the first time. And, uh, you know, so congrats to them. Enoch playing better, how much different does that make Louisville? It makes them a lot different. You know, anytime you have a presence inside where you can go in there and a guy can score with his back to basket, with his back to the basket, where you can pitch it up to him, he can go get it above the rim, and that makes your ball screen offense a little bit more effective uh, because you have different reads, and then he can really go and get it on the uh, offensive glass. Uh, you know, his growth has 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 really really helped him. What was the what was the change you saw um, in Louisville, especially from the defensive end? today compared to uh, three weeks ago? Well, it was pretty obvious they weren't going to let the two guys, you know, for us, our two guards beat them. I think they uh, combined both of those kids, uh, Johnson and, and McGowan's, for 55 points the last time. And so they did, a, you know, their ball screen defense was tighter. They were more together. Uh, again, Williams, his ability to block shots you know, with verticality without fouling, uh, you, know, you can tell they put in a lot of work on that. Coach, this is two games in a row where you were able to force Jordan Moore into a tough shooting night. Uh, was there something specifically de defensively you wanted to take away from him? Well, we just tried to make his catches uh, hard, just like we did the first time. Um, and we just tried to have an awareness for him wherever he was on the court. He's a really good player. He's as improved as, as anyone in college basketball with what he's done from his freshman to sophomore year. Uh, and again, he made some big plays for him today. Um, and so he's a guy that I think you have, you know, you have to have your antenna up all the time. You know, guys have to know where he is, and hopefully you can get a little lucky and he can miss some shots. Jeff, you mentioned the turnovers. He also shot in the 20s in the second half. Where were the areas the offense was breaking down? Well, I thought, you know, we had some opportunities off ball screens in the first half that we finished. In the second half, we didn't. We had three layups right there off of rolls that we just didn't finish. You know, we had a foul one time where we stepped up and missed two free throws. And then that puts a little bit more pressure on our guards because now they, you know, we feel like we, you know, I have to do it. I have to make something happen. They did a great job of gapping up. Uh, when we came off ball screens, you know, they, they, they gapped up. And so we had pitches that were there, but, you know, we were reluctant to shoot the three. Uh, and so I just think that they just tightened up a little bit on ball screen stuff. And, and, and we missed some, some plays early, uh, you know, right at the basket. And I think that, that kind of got us down a little bit. Coach, you've uh, taken over a pit team that has struggled in the past, and it's a research that's remarkable in college basketball. So talk about what you've instilled in this team and going forward, what you want to prove next year and going forward. Well, you know, the thing we've tried to establish is, 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 is a level of competition. Um, you know, we're going to fight. We're going to, you know, be together. And uh, we've tried to establish a culture of, 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 of defense. You know, we are a team that's a, that, that, that's a really streaky offensive team. Um, and I knew that coming in. And so we've tried to put guys in positions, you know, to be instinctual. Uh, but the main thing is just to fight, just to fight and compete every possession you're out there. I think we're taking the necessary steps to do that. You know, we have to improve, just like everyone. You constantly have to improve your talent. You have to, you know, get players. You have the players that you have. You have to help them get better. Um, I think we've done that. You know, this is a difficult time of the season for everyone because it's the end of January, you're getting close to February, everyone's a little bit banged up, especially guys that played a lot of minutes. Everyone's a little bit fatigued. And you know you have to have something where you, know, where you can push through. Normally you see teams that are a little bit older, they're able to do that, they have a little bit more experience, they understand how to handle this. 
for our group, this is different for everyone. You know, for our freshmen, they've never been through anything like this. And so I think we're a little bit fried, you know, from there for our returning guys. You know, I, I don't know by this time of the season last year, I don't know, I don't know how much they were fighting. You know, they were maybe ready to check it in. Um, and, and, and so we're learning a lot as we go. And obviously we, we've played a really, really tough schedule in the conference so far. If you look at the seven games that we've played, it's Louisville twice, it's Duke, it's North Carolina, it's NC State, and it's Florida State. All teams that are ranked Florida State was 11 when we played them, we know they're not. So it's been tough and, and we fought and, and you know, we've competed in each one. And so that's something we have to keep doing. You know, no one's going to feel sorry for us. We can't feel sorry for ourselves. We have to keep fighting and keep competing. Jeff, what are, what are your impressions of right here to your right? Okay, so uh, of Kristen Cunningham, he's, he's, I think he's at three to one now in assist to turnover ratio in the ACC. He's playing really well for them. Yeah, he's playing great. Um, I, you know, you can tell he's an experienced guard. He was an outstanding player at Sanford. And uh, you know he's come here, and, and he probably didn't get off to the greatest start, but he's settled in and become a really good leader for their team. You know he values the ball; he doesn't turn it over. He has a great grasp of their offense. He's had some really good offensive games uh, today. He didn't score the ball well, but he ran their team. Uh, you know he assisted. He didn't turn the ball over much. He's a really good player. I think the common thread is that we played, you said, I think you said the last three games, we played three really, really good teams that are very good defensively. Um, you know, Syracuse's zone is one of the most difficult zones to con conquer. And there's a reason why they're, I think, tied, I think, for first place in this league. Duke is one of the best teams in the country. And there's a reason why they're ranked two and tied for first place in this league. And Louisville's a really good team. They're tied for first place in this league. I think that's why. Dwayne Sutton had a double double oh, over here. Jeff. Sorry. Dwayne Sutton had a double double against you guys last time. It was just short of that tonight. What do you make of him, and how do you guys go about approaching guarding him? Yeah, you know, I think he's the ultimate glue guy, and I mean that as a as, as a compliment. I think every really good team has guys like him that uh, they impact the game in a lot of different ways. I think he does it with his defense, obviously with his rebounding. And then he can score, um, and he doesn't. It's not necessarily needed all the time, but it's something that he can do. He's older, he's mature, strong kid. Seems like a really good teammate. Um, you know, he's someone that we really, you know, had a focus on, especially with him on the offensive glass. You know, uh, uh, in those uh, in those scoreless drafts we talked about earlier, Jeff. I mean, whether it's youth, um, you know, do you feel like? In those situations when the team's gone a little while without scoring, do you ever notice Trey and X, you know, trying to, you know, maybe pressing, trying too hard to maybe make a play? I think I think it's not just those two guys. I think we have guys during that time that do do that. You know, it's coming from a great place. They they want to, you know, our guys want it so bad, and you know, we're learning how to do it. Um, and 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 so yeah, I think we have many guys that try to press in those situations. Thank you, guys.